So I, I just mentioned uh, what I see as the three major challenges I think humanity faces. The ones I, once again that I think are climate change, uh, changing our, our, our uh, source of energy, and nuclear proliferation. Uh, but what do you think are the, the major challenges we face today, locally or you know here in the U.S. or even globally? In terms of well, I'll, I'll anything, whatever you whatever okay. you think. I want to start by framing the way I think of Paul Ferry in terms exactly. of uh, Paul Ferry. Okay. Uh, you know, he's the press. I think literacy. Okay. First and foremost, yeah, yeah, because until people literally become able to articulate and feel like they actually have agency in the struggle, they're not going to be able to fight. Right. Right now, I see a lot of people who are, I don't want to say passive victims, but they, they really are just riding along because they don't recognize the struggles in the line. Right. We can talk to them about climate change, but after a while, it was just so out because they don't realize that by buying that Hummer, they contributed to it. And they don't realize just the difference in their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think that's the most essential thing in terms of people being able to struggle. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's because I know one thing people talk about, in order to struggle against something, you have to name it. You know, so... You have to know your enemy. Yes, and things emerge over time. There's, there's a particular oppression taking place. But until people organize and name that oppression so they can educate people around it, right. people don't even sometimes they don't even know they're being oppressed. Absolutely. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. I think that's probably the biggest enemy um, in terms of those other factors. I don't want to discount any of that. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. Um, I think the biggest thing that I want to see, and I think it's specifically about our community, yeah. is a shift from just fighting things to actually create things. Yes. Meaning we literally need to move deeper into our empowerment. Right. Right. Uh, we have to create more institutions. We have to, in order to really benefit from people becoming literate, you have to be able to give them an idea of what it looks like, mm -hmm. what victory looks like, what um, struggle from bottom up looks like, what the victory will be, mm -hmm. what it means to control your own education system and how that will affect your child. I your child to grow up with opportunities that I'll see. Right. I think we really have to focus on and engage people and sort of participate. Right. Yeah. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And just real in closing, um, not in closing, but on the way here, I was coming from the Veterans for Peace office and I rode the uh, Metro. I got off at the Union Station stop. And before I got there, this young man got on with some, I guess he got on with these other buddies of theirs. And I, they're probably teenagers, so they might be, I'm getting old now, so I can't tell the difference between somebody that's 15 and 21 right. sometimes, right? Yeah. Anyway, uh, one of them was like, he had a grill, you know, all this gold stuff and everything, and his hat and all that. And uh, he's like, yeah, they call me Little Wayne. So then he starts to rap. And I'm sitting, you know, listening, and I hear him, and he's cursing. Okay, I know rap has cursing in it, and when I was growing up, I cursed now, so I'm not going to act like yeah. But, But the thing was, when, when I think when we were younger, we understood that there's a place for everything, and that when we get in the public and there's grown people around, you know, I, just out of respect, we wouldn't curse, and also because we didn't want to be reprimanded, right? So he was cursing, and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? And I know today, unfortunately, all of us, we... And I'm including myself, don't step up all the time or hardly ever. So I decided, okay, I don't want to start nothing, so I'm not going to say anything, right? So then, um, at the devolver stop, they, we stop, still cursing, we keep going, and they said, uh, next stop, Union Station, which I knew I had to get off. And I thought it was coming up quick, probably because I wanted to do something. So I got up, and I started to walk there, but it was further along, then, so I had to stop. And I saw they were in like the entrance area, you know, where you can stand. And on the other side, there were two older African American women sitting. Mm -hmm. They made me a little angry, so I decided I had to say something, right. you know. So I said, "Hey, young men, you know, real nice. You, know, you guys, you know, when when you're on the train like this, you really should think about how your language, man. You know, you probably shouldn't curse, you know." And then like straighten all up. Oh yeah, I understand. Yeah, you're right, sir. I understand. And then one of them was like, "Hey man, when you rap, you shouldn't curse." You know. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, "Are you trying to act like 
He's Eddie Haskell. Right. Right here. Right. You know, he's a good guy. But what, what it reminded me is that young people, and that won't happen all the time. Some people you're going to get some milk from. You have to deal with that. But more times than not, young people want some direction. You know, they want somebody to say to them, hey, this isn't the place for that, you know. And he said, well, the guy said, well, I, I don't have to curse. And I, was, and I said, well, I'm not saying never curse. I'm just saying this isn't the place for it, especially right. with the older ladies there. Right. You know, I'm trying to be reasonable, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I was encouraged by that. And, and I hope viewers can think when they see things, and you've got to pick your time and place, yeah. right? But we need to step up. And it's kind of what you're saying. Yeah. we got to step up. See? And that, that brings up another point we hadn't even gotten to. See, I love hip hop. I grew up yeah. hip hop. Right. Hip hop, by the way, it started and it's grown. It started as an activist art form. Right. It started as a venue where you could say things. You could spit the poetry in ways people were receptive to it and say things that they wouldn't necessarily hear anyone else. Right. Because it was an art, a license got expanded. The license on the language you could use got expanded. And as people started to embrace it, they took that same license on themselves. So it's that double-edged sword. Right. They feel like, okay, yeah, he's spitting this, he's spitting this, but he's cursing too, I'm going to use that same language. And yeah, you can get this, and you can get this. And then they began to not differentiate between what the purpose of the language was mm. and how they were using it. Right. So they, they separated the activism from just spitting and cursing. Right. And if we don't challenge it, we don't say something, that's a part of that memory. Just like we talk about the Crips and Bloods and how they used to be community organi organizations, it's lost on most of those active members. If we don't remind them, they'll never know. Right. They just see in little shadows of what the intent was. Right. Yeah, so we have to. Yeah. It's essential that we do that. Good. Well, I appreciate the time you took out and uh and you know we'll be talking in the future, and I'm definitely going to be calling you to ask you what you think is happening with this and that. Um, I was going to do that anyway, but now I have another reason. Absolutely, thanks. Anytime.